Hello and welcome to the City of Laguna Beach Children's Holiday Palette Workshop. The Children's Holiday Palette Program and this workshop video are presented by the City of Laguna Beach Arts Commission and Cultural Arts Department. In this video, we will be going over how to participate in the Children's Holiday Palette Program, as well as how to approach the project and some basic art materials and techniques to help you create a stunning palette design. This program is open to children between the ages of 5 and 17 who live or attend a school or art program in Laguna Beach. To view the guidelines for the program, click the link in the video description or go to the Cultural Arts page on the City of Laguna Beach website at www.lagunabeachcity.net forward slash cultural arts. From this page, click the Calls for Artists tab located on the left-hand side to view all current Calls for Artists. Here, you should see a link for this year's Children's Holiday Palette Program. This link will open the guidelines, application, and blank palette template in your web browser. You can print the file directly or download it for continued use and future reference. Before getting into the full palette design, we're going to show examples of how to draw some winter and holiday items. To make things easier, try to think of what you're drawing as the simple shapes that make it up. For example, to draw a bow, start with a small square or circle. Then draw sideways heart shapes on either side. Finish by adding wavy lines for the ribbon streamers. You can add circles to the bow to make a wreath. or add a square or box to make a present. To draw a holiday ornament, start with a circle. Add a box on top and a curved line like a question mark for the hook. To draw a winter hat, Start with a puffy cloud shape. Then draw two converging lines coming out of the top. Finish by adding a circle or another puffy cloud shape for the pom pom. To draw a wool sock or stocking, start with a bubble letter L and leave the top open. Finish by adding a puffy cloud shape at the top. To draw an ice skate, draw another bubble letter L. This time, close the top with a flat line. Draw a long semicircle underneath the boot and close the top of it. Finish by connecting the blade to the boot by adding lines and then add ovals and lines for laces. One way to make your drawing stand out is to fill some of your shapes with patterns. 
For example, with hats or stockings, you can give them stripes or polka dots, or even combine the designs to make up a unique pattern. may even want to try using multiple colors, like you can see here with these zigzags, to really make your drawing pop. Here is one of our small wooden artist palettes used to display selected designs. Notice that there is a thumb hole on the right hand side. This hole is represented by a large black spot on your palette template. For the best results, you should avoid drawing or painting in the black spot, but also think about working around the space creatively as part of your design. It's time to think about your idea and decide what you want to draw. To help, you can think of the following things. What makes winter in Laguna Beach so special? What is your favorite part about the holidays? How do you celebrate the holidays? Or maybe you want to tell a story with your picture. You can even do a scene underwater, at the North Pole, in outer space, or something completely unique there are no restrictions, so be imaginative. First, make sure your paper is right side up, so you can read the words and the arrow in the upper right is pointing to the top of the page. For this demonstration, we will be using pencil and crayons because they are easy to use and widely available, but you can use whatever materials you are comfortable with. When drawing or painting, it is also a good idea to have extra scrap paper so you can practice and test your materials. I start by drawing lightly with the pencil so that it's easy to erase if I need to. Don't press too hard. You can always go back over it later to make it darker. I will be drawing the whole design this way first and then filling it in like a coloring book. I am drawing one of my favorite places in Laguna, the big tower at Victoria Beach. I have a pretty good memory of what it looks like, but I also have a few photographs here to help with some of the details. If you are having trouble drawing something, try to find pictures of it and copy them by looking for the simple shapes that make it up. I want the tower to be right in the middle of my drawing so that we can see the ocean and the beach. Notice that I have drawn the cliff above and around the black spot on the template. Remember, we don't want to draw in that area because it will be the pellet's thumb hole. Below the tower, there are big rocks, which I will draw as different sized ovals and bumpy circles. Some rocks have a more rectangular shape and are sticking out into the ocean. I'll add some wavy lines here to show where the water meets the sand. Even though it doesn't snow in Laguna Beach, I want to make a snowman because my drawing is winter themed. I'll put him on the right side so he can be on the sand. 
You can make a snowman by drawing three circles on top of each other that get smaller as they go up. Draw a long skinny triangle to give him a carrot nose. Finally, add dots for eyes and buttons, and small lines for his stick arms. You can also put a top hat on him by drawing a square with a line at the top of his head. To make my snowman more interesting, I'm going to draw some things for him to hold. Because he's at the beach, I'll give him a lifeguard rescue tube by drawing a long rectangle around his hand and writing rescue on it. We'll color it in red later. Let's give him a surfboard too. To draw a surfboard, start by making a tall, rounded capital A shape and close the bottom. Then add a fin by drawing a small curved triangle. Now I'm going to move over to the left side of the drawing. Rulers are helpful for making long straight lines like the horizon if you are doing an ocean scene where the sea touches the sky, which is what I have here. I can see in the photo, and if you look down the beach in real life, you'll notice points of land in the distance reaching out into the ocean. Sometimes it's a straight cliff, and sometimes it's more of a gentle slope or even something in between. This one way in the back is just going to come down and touch the water. Laguna Beach is famous for its sunsets, so I'm going to draw the sun and some clouds in the sky. There are many ways to draw a sun, but I'm going to do it as a simple circle. I have a small jarlet here that is about the size that I want, so I'll place it on the paper and trace to get a smooth round circle. Then I'll add in some simple fluffy clouds. The design is starting to get pretty full, but I think there's still room to add a few more things. There are many animals in the ocean, so how about a dolphin jumping out of the water? To draw a dolphin, start with two curved lines to make a crescent banana shape. I'll cross over the horizon line to show that the dolphin is jumping really high. Then I'll erase the bit that's inside. Don't be afraid to draw through your previous lines. You can always erase them if you're using a pencil. He needs a tail, so put another crescent banana shape down at the bottom. Give him some fins, the same way we put one on the surfboard earlier, but don't close them off.
Finally, he needs a nose and eyes. And I'll make some quick splashy scribbles to indicate where he jumped out of the water. Remember to use your imagination. Maybe he has a really big candy cane. To draw a candy cane, I'll make a big upside down block letter J right next to his nose and give it some diagonal stripes. When you're at the beach, you can usually see some palm trees along the cliffs, so I think I'll put some in my drawing. Palm trees are really tall and skinny, so I'll draw two lines really close together to make the trunk. Then, for the fronds or leaves, I make a curved line and connect the ends with a zigzag line. Another curved line and connect the ends with a zigzag. You can put as many leaves as you want. While I'm adding trees, why not a Christmas tree? There are lots of ways to draw Christmas trees. Some are very easy, like a triangle with a rectangle at the bottom for the trunk. Or you can stack multiple triangles on top of each other. This one will have some more zigzags at the bottom. I would like to add some more animals, but we're running out of space. So how about a crab right here on the beach? It's very small, so I'm just going to give him a little oval body, some stick legs, and of course, some claws. With animals, it's always good to show them doing something. It's hard to see animals when they are just sitting still. Let's have him putting up holiday lights. Holiday lights are very easy to draw. You just make a squiggly line wherever you want them to go and put little ovals or circles on either side of it, all the way down. Then you can fill the circles with whatever colors you want. You can use these same shapes to make seaweed, you just color it green or brown. That's pretty good. There's a lot going on. So I think it's time I jump into some color. If you are using crayons, markers, or watercolors, try not to color in the areas that you want to keep white. Let the white of the paper be the white. When you begin coloring, you can start wherever you want. I like to start with some of the smaller details before I do large areas so I don't accidentally cover something that I didn't want to. For example, I'm going to put some colored polka dots in the trees to make it look like they have lights in them.
don't forget to include some patterns when coloring. The surfboard is a little boring, so I'll give it a wavy design to make it stand out. Patterns can also be used to show texture. The lower section of the tower looks rougher and is actually made up of lots of little rocks. So I'm going to use polka dots and different shades of brown to show that. If you have lots of things that are the same color, it can sometimes be easier to just color them one after the other, like the rescue tube, the crab, and the stripes on the candy cane. Now that I have my smallest details in, I want to fill in my background. Remember, I was planning on a famous Laguna Beach sunset, so I'm going to use some warmer colors for the sky instead of just blue. By using similar colors next to each other, like yellow and orange, or blue and violet, you can blend where they meet and create what is called a gradient. This is great for making big areas of color interesting, like the sky or the ocean. You can also do this fairly easily with colored pencils or watercolors. Sunsets can produce lots of vibrant colors, so I'm using many wide, horizontal areas of color that change slightly as I move up the page, almost like a rainbow. With crayons and colored pencils, you can change how strong the color shows up by how hard you press. Pressing harder will usually make it appear darker. Starting softly can help you blend areas together more easily.
I'm going to make the clouds dark purple and pink rather than white because of the way the sun shines through them in the evening. I'm using small circles to color them in to help make them look fluffier. For the ocean, just like the sky, I'm going to use many similar colors near each other and change how hard I press to get that same gradient effect. We usually see water as green or blue, so I'm going to use different shades of those two colors. Instead of small circles, I'm coloring as small horizontal scribbles to make it look more like ripples in the water.
If you put in smaller details of color, like the holiday lights, don't forget to work around them when you're filling in the rest of an object. This will keep the colors bright. Sometimes using different shades of the same color for similar objects, like the grass and trees, can help them stand out from each other and make your picture more interesting. Moving into the foreground, these big rocks look a bit flat. To make them look more three-dimensional, I'm going to use a darker color along the edges that are farthest away from the sun in order to give them a shadow. I'll use the same color at the base of the cliff to separate where it meets the sand. The same technique of shading the far edge can also be used on the snowman to make him look more round, but I don't want to make it too dark because he's going to stay white. There are a lot of warm colors in this area, so I'm going to make his hat blue to help balance the picture. I'm using a soft violet rather than gray or brown to color the distant land so it keeps the drawing more colorful.
too much gray, brown, or black can make your colors look muddy. Black is a very strong color, so it's a good idea to use only a little in areas that really need it. If you have time, you can go back through and clean up any areas that may need it. We hope this video helps and provides some valuable information. Remember, you can do it any way you want, but now you have some ideas to get you started. Once you have finished your drawing, make sure you write your name and age in the bottom left corner so everyone knows that it's yours. On the application form, be sure to give your artwork a title and tell us about your design. Then have your parents fill out the rest of the information and follow the instructions and the guidelines to make your submission. Be sure to finish your design early so you can enter it by the submission deadline. And most importantly, have fun. Thanks for watching.